Welcome to the Fantasy Football Sackos Podcast with your hosts, Jason Shellcross and Alex Krobe. Let's go! Fantasy Football Sackos, week nine. Happy election day. Hope you voted. If you haven't, you should, because that's like, that's more important than podcasting right now. But uh, Alex, welcome to week nine. We are through half of the season we're gearing up for the playoff stretch run how are your playoff hopes looking are you a shoe in wine and dine it's week nine baby very nice (laughs) um i uh i have no (laughs) i have no chance in basically any league so uh here we are (laughs) i'm just gonna pick up all these delicious delicious waiver picks in in week nine here no, it's it's been a rough season. Injuries have pretty much hit everybody. Then you're worried about COVID and then you're worried about being league manager and dealing with people. And hey, I had a daughter this year. Let's uh, like that's by far and away the best thing to come out of out of uh, 2020. 2020. I lost every single gambling bet that I made this weekend. So <laughs> it's it's uh, I mean, any fun I, I don't know what's going out on honestly, what happened. So. No, just everything sucks. I mean, come on. Packers losing the Vikings, the Titans losing to freaking Cincinnati. Um, I mean, the Bears somehow cover four and a half against the Saints. The Saints should have destroyed them. And I'm saying that as bear like you picked against the Bears. I would have picked I would have picked them to cover. Of course. I would have picked him oh, to cover. God, they're so bad. But there's no San- There wasn't so any bad. Sanders and there wasn't any Michael Thomas. I'm surprised that you didn't pick him to cover. The Bears have nobody. They have a defense. They have literally a defense. nobody. They have a whole Their defense. Their offense sucks. Yes, but they have a defense. That yeah, keeps all they need the to do is score close. six points and they should have cut. Co- yeah, whatever. I'm just saying. Anyway, week nine. Ready for it. We get to talk about these wonderful players like Darnell Moody and oh god, like it's gonna be terrible. I can't believe it. there's uh, like the way the waiver wire is just scoured, and we'll try to find a couple gems for you. How are you? Uh, I think you're gonna be surprised at uh, some of the player availability going on right now. Um, I'm good. Okay. I'm one step closer to the playoffs in our league of record, which is wonderful. However, I will be without George Kittle for the rest of the season. And so my second round pick is now Bye. up in flames. So that's I between Kittle, Sutton, and Debo this season, I've just really been taken to the woodshed. So hopefully, uh hopefully that's over now. But we'll see. Hey, it's week nine. We're almost to double digits. There you go. And then we can cancel the entire season because they postpone games in week 14, 15, and 16, which is stupid. All right, let's get that. We're going to talk about that later. All right, uh, let's dive into these waivers. Let's start with some QBs that are available in more than 50% of leagues. Number one, ooh, Drew Locke. I know, it is deep. You, we, welcome, to this, <laughs> welcome to the second half. Welcome to the second half of the season when you are digging all the way down for plus matchups for uh, players available in more than 50% of leagues. And the closest thing that you can find to a streaming candidate is one drew lock. Uh, he had almost 250 passing yards, uh, against the chargers this week, three touchdowns and a pick, um, won the game 31 30 after coming back from a 24 to three deficit, uh, put up 20 fantasy points, uh, has Atlanta has Atlanta. Who's giving up the most points to the quarterback position at 25 and a half a week. He's rostered in 5% of leagues. Look, I'm not saying that you spend any fab on him. I'm not saying that you spend any fab on him because you don't. (laughs) Oh my God. (laughs) But he is out there and teams are going to be desperate. Um, So I'm just saying he's there. He's 5% rostered. And yeah, I mean, Look, like the the days of, you know, adding like the uh, who, the Stafford is rostered in 60% of leagues. 
Um, who else? Burroughs, 72%. Tannehill, 73%. Herbert, 83%. Like, all those guys that we've been telling everybody to get for weeks and weeks and weeks are rostered in more than 50% yeah. of leagues now. There are some like decent guys that are available in more than 50%, like Derek Carr and Jared Goff. But like the Rams are on a buy in week nine and Derek Carr <clears throat> is going up against the chargers in LA in week nine. So it's like, I'd rather avoid that yeah. and just throw drew lock out there. Who's a, I mean, he's a fine if you're in a two QB league or a super flex league too, if you need yep. somebody to throw in. I know a lot of people probably had Jimmy in some lineups and Jimmy Garoppolo is going to be out and missing some time. So I wouldn't spend any yeah, fat on him. I hear you. Uh, nope. I, I totally agree. Uh, and then like the only other quarterback streaming option, honestly, for me is Nick Foles. Um, and he, you know, he's going up against the Titans, which just got destroyed by Joe Burrow. Um, I mean, there's just, you're probably in a rough spot if you're still looking for a quarterback now that the Herberts and the Burrows and the even Tannehills of the world aren't aren't even around anymore to be picked up. I mean, Big Ben's rostered in 68% of leagues, so maybe he's available. Cam at 64, people kind of gave up on him and he looked a little bit better last week. Um, there There's not a whole lot of quarterbacks available, um, so... I mean, full, f the only reason I say Foles is just because the Titans defense is, has given it up uh, the last couple of weeks um, from a touchdown perspective. Um, you know, they Foles is going to have at least one touchdown because they've given up one passing touchdown every game. I he's the only other guy unless he gets benched for Trubisky and then sorry, which could happen. There were rumors about it during the middle of possible. the Saints game. Um yeah, yeah. If Troy, if Troy Aikman was in charge, he would have benched him like in the third quarter. He was. I've never heard two commentators go in so hard on a team than Troy Aikman and Joe Buck did uh, on the Bears' offense in the third and fourth quarter on Sunday. It was incredible. I just, the, I feel like whoever the announcers are, they're always just going in on the Bears. Though I don't know if I'm just sensitive to it or if our offense has just been pathetic. That's because the they better suck. Part of a decade. Yeah, there you go. Um. Yeah, yeah. So you uh, you wouldn't spend any fab on or on or Foles, as though. no no Z yeah no both both zero bids or as the Packer fans say the Bears still suck. There you go. All right, well that that's gonna do it for quarterbacks. I am so sorry for you if you're stuck starting either one of those guys. Um, at least they have decent matchups, and maybe hopefully if you are stuck starting them, get you to at least fifteen points. I, that's all I would hope for out of either one of them. Yep. Um, let's move into some running back ads, shall we? Oh boy, there we go. My running back ad of the week is Dude, none other than one J.K. Dobbins of the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, I was so hoping you were going to say Naheem Hines. Oh, I'm so hoping. No, no, he's not on my list. <laughs> oh uh -huh. my goodness. One J.K. Dobbins rostered in almost... 49% of leagues, so available in more than half of ESPN leagues, had 15 carries for 113 yards, had another catch for 8 yards, had a 66% snap share. That's that shit I do like. To Gus Edwards, 32% Ooh. snap share. Uh, on the season, Dobbins has 40 rushing attempts for 267 yards or approximately 6.7 yards per carry leads all running backs with at least 40 rushing attempts in yards per carry this season. Second place was Philip Lindsay with about 6.4 yards per carry. Um, Mark Ingram still out with a high ankle sprain. It's been two weeks. You got to think it's probably at least a couple more. Um, it's just, He's incredible. 52 running backs have at least 50 touches this season. Dobbin leads all, all of them in missed tackle rate per touch at almost 33%. Ingram is last at 5.7%. So <laughs> Dobbins forces a missed tackle 
on about a third of all of his touches. And Dobbins or, or and Ingram is like never what five five point seven percent. He also has the most yards after contact per rush this year. He is tied with Nick Chubb at four point two yards after contact per rush. The guy is incredible. He should have never been dropped. I dropped Josh Kelly in a league. Uh, And held on to Dobbins because I believe that eventually Dobbins was going to get his chance. And Josh Kelly had his chance, had multiple chances and averaged like two yards, two and a half yards of carry. So I dropped him like he was very hot. Um, I feel like I I don't know. I don't think he's going to go anywhere. Um, It's an incredible offense. You know, it's the number one as far as scheme goes game to game, week to week. Um, double digit touches for at least mm. as long as Ingram's out. I'm could not be more thrilled about some JK. And honestly, what I'm really hoping for is that Ingram is traded before the deadline, but we'll see. Good luck. Good luck with that. Yeah, no, it's, it. I, I'm good with that. Um, it, it's hard to put a number on him. Um, it is. From 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 a fab perspective, I, you're you're getting towards the end of the year, um, so you got five weeks before playoffs start. Um, you want to let me read you that playoff schedule? Use. That playoff yeah. schedule at Cleveland, at home against Jacksonville, at home against the Giants. If he's out there for sixty six percent of snaps against those three teams. Yeah, but he won't be, and we know that because Ingram's coming back. They're they're not going to stop giving him the ball. Also, I mean, Gus Edwards had 16 carries for 87 yards on Sunday too, and I I know you're looking at snap percentages, but I mean, Gus has gotten at least seven carries each of the last four games um, that they've played, so he's still there, Um, and they still have Lamar, and once Ingram comes back, it's it's just a tough backfield to get a read on. Um, you know, you can't tell me that three different running backs could be played in fantasy, but I, theoretically they could. They have a really rough matchup coming up this week against Indian Indianapolis in Indy. Um, so you're you're not gonna want to play him honestly against that defense. Um, so if you're adding him, you're really adding him for a couple weeks down the road potentially, and probably not this week. Um, I guess I so, would disagree. I, his his upside's there, but he wasn't supposed I, to be playable. Of, of all, he wasn't supposed to be playable against the Pittsburgh Steelers this week, and he averaged what like seven and a half yards per carry or something, completely asinine against them. Like, I'm just saying. Yeah, no, I get that. Yeah, they. I mean, they ran the ball. What like. 50 times against them or damn close to it. Um, Yeah, it's just. um, Yeah, I, I, I get all of that. Um, His upside, if he's available in your league, I understand why you might go 50% of whatever you have left on him. Um, Just, just to get him and hope that he's the guy that wins you a title. Cause that's really all that matters. With that schedule, he could be, especially if Mark Ingram, I mean, if you think about it, how many yeah. times this season have we seen people have a soft tissue injury, come back, re-injure it, and now they're out again? Like, that could very well happen. Uh, every, every player for the 49ers. Exactly. So, like, that, that's not under the realm of possibilities. He's also, you know, he's not as young as JK. Maybe he takes a little bit longer to, to come back from it. I don't know. I'm just maybe they make a move at the deadline because I feel like he showed everybody that he could be a workhorse back if they want him to. It's just I don't know if they're going to because Mark Ingram is there, even though he's clearly, I think, the third best running back on that team. But. Yeah, I I don't think I would go more than 35 percent on him if he's available. Um, Hopefully you picked him up if he was available like I did in a different league before. a week and a half ago, actually. So I, um, yeah, I, I'm probably somewhere in the 35% range, but I, I get and understand if you'd want to go higher to try to get him 
and and say that he's going to be the guy that could get me over the hump, especially because of schedule at the end of the year. Yeah, and I'm a, and I'm a firm second half believer that he was being eased in, and the Ingram injury opened the door, and it could be more than a fifty percent share, even if it's not quite two thirds like it was this week when Ingram comes back. Um, I would do probably forty percent, push the chips into the middle, and try to get the guy that I think could potentially win you a league, uh, given that role. Yeah, I get it. If he gets the role, but that offense and that schedule is unbelievable. So if he gets it, yeah, I think he's a yep. league winner. Um, so would you um, how how much would you bid on Gus Edwards, if anything? I think you are, could, are you trying to get him with a zero bid? I think you yeah. could absolutely roster Gus Edwards and probably start him, especially in a plus matchup. He's going to get 10 to 15 carries a game while Ingram is out. He's right. not going to get any catches. But I mean, if right. he s- sneaks in a touchdown or something. Um, I would probably do like, I mean, I think you could get him for like a 5% or less bid. Yeah, I I think he's a zero bid just in case you want to get him. Um, you know, he's got a touchdown each of the last two weeks, um, 14 plus carries each of those two weeks. So, I mean, if, if Ingram's going to be out, I get it. Um, again, because they're facing the Colts next week in Indy, I, um, I get that. That's why I wouldn't bid on Gus Edwards. If anything, he's a zero bid. If you have the roster flexibility to to get him, I would say he's also more, much more widely available. Only rostered in four point eight percent of ESPN leagues, so he is going to be who is out there between the two to go bid on. Um, and yep. I wouldn't bid anything aggressive on him, but yeah, I, I think you, you could certainly get him probably in most leagues for less than five percent. In a super hyper competitive one, I mean, you might want to think about going a little bit higher, but I wouldn't really. Um, so, yep. Would you also just to kind of round out that backfield? I mean, Mark Ingram's available in fifty four point, or sorry, he's rostered in fifty four point four percent of leagues, so he, he's available in over forty five percent of leagues. Um, are are you letting him sit on the waiver wire then? I am dropping Mark Ingram to pick up. Gus Edwards or J.K. Dobbins. I feel like he is the third best running back on that team. Wow. So. Okay. Sorry, Marky Mark. Um, let's move on, shall we? Uh, DJ Dallas of the Seahawks had 18 carries for just over 40 yards, a score, five catches, 17 yards, and another score through the air. Um, Chris Carson was 50-50 to play. He was ruled out. Uh, eventually Carlos Hyde had a hamstring injury. He was doubtful during the week and then was downgraded to out DJ Dallas rostered in 11.7% of leagues. Look, if Carson and Hyde miss another week, I feel like DJ Dallas is viable. Um, are you spending any fab on the third string running back for the Seahawks? I actually can't believe that he would even be available. I know he's rostered in only 11% of leagues, but who would like somebody should have been picking him up and playing him or at least rostering him at the worst last week. I know that he had a rough matchup and he, he was fine. Um, but I can't believe he's only rostered in 11% of leagues. Um, that just doesn't really make any sense. Um, yeah, I mean, you might as well. Uh, he's at Buffalo this week, um, which, you know, they they had a rough time trying to stop Clyde Edwards Hilaire a couple of weeks ago. Um, so yeah, I mean he's he's viable. Um I would try to get him with a one or two dollar bid. Um, because Chris Carson's potentially coming back, Carlos Hyde's coming back, and you have potentially Rashad Penny sitting out there still, um, who's only rostered in two point two percent of leagues. Uh we don't know when he's coming back. He's a potential stash candidate too. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I think, I think that's a one or $2 bid at the most. Um, and it's only because if Chris Carson doesn't play, we won't know. Um, you mentioned that you you mentioned this last week about Pete Carroll saying, oh, he, he's definitely going to play this week and he might have like a broken femur. Um, (laughs) so we don't know what's actually going to happen. 
Um, so I, I would do one or two dollars on DJ because he's only another week, like one week guy. If you're desperate, I get that you might have to go more, but you don't even know if he's playing. So that's why I temper expectations. And I would potentially look more at Rashad Penny, who's getting closer to a return week by week here. Um, if, if you have the roster flexibility to stash someone, um, I would rather just do a zero bid on Penny than have DJ Dallas on my team. Um, just because I think there's a potential higher upside with Penny. Come playoff time. That's an interesting little take there. Um, huh. Well, I guess especially if you have a vacant IR spot um, that you could maybe. Yeah, stash absolutely. Um, all right, let's yep. move on, shall we? Our next running back is Jamichael Hasty of the 49ers. Uh, he had 12 carries for 29 yards. Ooh, gross. Uh, ha, ha. Uh, against <laughs> against the Seahawks and he had a score and then he had one catch for two yards look this is Wee. an ad because of all of the subtractions that have happened for the 49ers you have <laughs> Mostert on IR with a high ankle sprain you had Jeff Wilson out with an ankle you have McKinnon who only had three carries uh, last week to Michael Hasty rostered in 45 Point six percent of leagues. Are you spending any fab on Hasty with good old Nick Mullins calling the shots over there? All right. So here's the thing. Oh, I I know I've said some pretty ridiculous. I I know I've said some pretty ridiculous things on this podcast, and I think I make a complete ass of myself on a weekly basis. So yeah, thank like you Le'Veon all for listening. Bell being ranked um, number two last week, and then finishing as yeah, like okay. running back infinity. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I knew that was coming. Hey, I thought there was a revenge game coming. And how does Mahomes throw for five touchdowns and and they don't get Lev Lev Bell a tutty? Unbelievable. Um, Here's the thing. Do you really think that a start like so we're, we're through eight weeks. How many running backs for the 49ers have started and finished a game? Like it's an honest question. They always get hurt in the middle of the game. I was going to say like one like or two. Tevin Coleman. Like Tevin Coleman started the game and had three carries for 20 yards right out of the gate and then re-injured himself. Like Mostert has played in two games and got hurt in the middle of two of them and got taken out. McKinnon somehow of all of them has stayed healthy. Uh, Jeff Wilson Jr. has gotten hurt. Te- like I just... Here's the thing. I'm not saying Hasty's going to get hurt um, in the middle of the game, but I'm, that's what kind of what I'm saying because all 49ers get hurt in the middle of the game. Like literally every single 49er that has been besides like Brandon Ayuk has gotten hurt in the middle of the game. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Green Bay, they just got bludgeoned by Dalvin Cook real good. Um, so I get why you'd want to pick up Hasty's if he's available. Um, but I mean, Jamichael Hasty is a one week, maybe two week play. Then there's a bye week, and then you know Mostert's back, hopefully at full full strength here in week twelve. So Hasty is a two week rental. If you're desperate and you got to win, I get why you'd go all out um, at you know thirty forty percent just to get those two weeks. Um, it just kind of depends on if you're the desperate or not. Otherwise, um, yeah, I, you know what? I'll stick with 30%. Oh boy. I am so much lower on that. Slow, lower than that on him. I think he's probably, I would agree. Slide. He's probably a two week rental, but I just questioned their ability Two week rental. If you got to win, you got to win. Yeah, I guess, you know, if you're desperate and you have a losing record and you know, then maybe, and if you, you know, put them on your team. That's one less person for somebody else to pick up. I just question their ability to move the ball, yeah. uh, given the, you know, lengthy list of injuries that they've suffered through. But yeah, I mean, you're, but, and like you're going into this week and, you know, Mixon and or Gio Bernard are out because of buy and Kareem Hunt is out because of buy and Boston Scott's out because of buy and, you know, name however many Rams running backs you'd want are on a buy, and you might be desperate. And if Hasty's available, then I understand why you'd want to go get him to try to try to get a, a week nine win. There you go. All right. Our next running back is Damian Harris of the Patriots. 
Uh, he had 16 attempts for 102 yards and a score this week. He's rostered in just over 31% of leagues. How much? How is that possible? I I don't know. Um, <laughs> how much fab are you spending on the <laughs> Patriots who lost in just absolutely depressing fashion uh, to the Bills and Cam with another heartbreaker? Yeah, I mean. Yeah, D- Damien Harris has had one rough week against Denver week six, and that was when, um, you know, Cam wasn't playing and or at least I don't think he was playing. Um, so, I, I mean, Damien Harris has been good. Um, 102 yards to you this last week against Buffalo. Uh, got the Jets uh, this week. Should be another pretty good game for him. Um, and then Baltimore might be rough, but at Houston... Uh, is a great matchup, Arizona. So I, um, I mean, I, how is he only rostered in thirty one percent of leagues? If if people, if he's not on people's radar, like, I mean, he's he's probably a ten percent bid. I guess it might depend on what happens um, when they're at full. Like, we haven't seen their back their backfield at full strength yet, um, and and everybody healthy to see kind of how that. Um, how those shares kind of work out, but I mean, for now, Damian Harris has been the guy. Yeah, I I completely agree. I he's looked great, and he looked great in the preseason before I got hurt coming into the year. So I would have no trouble starting Damian Harris. Um, absolutely moving forward. Um, one running back I'd like to add in based off of so we film these obviously the night before we post them given that we post them first thing in the morning um one running back i would like to take the time to add right now is wayne gallman of the new york giants currently has a 11 wayne 11 rushing attempts for 45 yards and a score against the tampa bay buccaneers on lovely monday night football um and has Washington and Philly up the next two weeks. It's really not bad. He had 10 rushing attempts last week. I mean, I can't believe that they're actually even moving the ball like or have a lead in this game. I know. It's unbelievable. Yeah. But uh yeah, fourth quarter. That's, that's up, because I bet on Tampa Bay. <laughs> I, I have these magic I I I have these magical powers that I can change the outcome of games. Yeah, he he's looked fine um, as I'm kind of watching this off the side. And before we started filming, um, I, w- I would rather have Devonte Freeman. Um, he's rostered 51.2 percent of leagues. Um, and I mean, he, when he's healthy, he seems to be the guy. He should probably be back next week or the week after. Um, so I, I would much rather add Freeman if he's a free agent than Gallman. If he does miss again, Wayne Gallman is only rostered in about 15 percent of leagues. So he is out there for you. <clears throat> yep. All right, let's move on, shall we? Let's talk about Zach Moss. 14 carries, 81 yards, and two scores against the Patriots. Rostered in 36% of leagues. Look, Devin Singletary also had 14 yard or 14 carries for 86 yards. Uh, he did have another catch uh, for six yards as well. Looking like an even backs a backfield split, but with Zach Moss scoring the touchdowns. Um, I mean, I hope that people didn't drop him when he got hurt at the beginning of the season. I mean, a, a lot of people did. He's only you should you should have dropped him. Yeah, well, he should have been dropped. He might he might have nice value here in the second half. I think the Bills are probably the best team in that division. So, uh, I mean, maybe. Um, I mean, I I think Miami could be. They have the best defense in that division for sure. Yeah, uh uh-huh. With Um, Tua throw it in the ground. Viloa. Well, yeah, that's that's more of that's more of their issue. Um, Yeah, I uh, I don't want a Bills running back on my roster. Um, I don't have one in any of the four teams that I have, and um, I'd rather have somebody else pick up Zach Moss and um, try to play him against me on a weekly basis. I, I invite them to do that. Um, so you're I not going to spend any fab on him then? I mean, no, no. If I get him for a zero, that's fine. Um, but I'm not like getting super pumped about, I'm not getting zacked for Zach. 
and we've talked, geez, I think all season into the preseason about how terrible the Bills playoff schedule is with at home against Pittsburgh, flying yep. across the country to Denver and then flying back across the country to play at New England in your championship. So that's just brutal as far as traveling and all of those things goes. Yep. All right. And then our last running back is Jordan Wilkins. 20 carries. Hey, hey. 20 carries in week eight. How about it? 89 yards and a score. Taylor, Jonathan Taylor had 12 carries. Naheem Hines had two. In the post-game interview, Phil Rivers let it (laughs) slip that Jonathan Taylor was nicked up. I don't know what that means i don't know how bad it is um but evidently that's causing at least part of the issue look jordan wilkins is a great runner he just doesn't have the top end speed um he's only rostered in one half of one percent of leagues so he's available everywhere do you think that he's worth an ad would you spend any fab on somebody getting 20 carries Uh, I mean, the 20 carries seems nice. Um, I, <laughs> do you want him or do you want Naheem Hines? And I'm, and I'm not even make poking fun at you, uh, for your ad of Naheem Hines earlier this year, but I mean, Hines had two, two receiving touchdowns, five carries, um, this week too. Um, I mean, aren't we assuming that Jonathan Taylor Thomas is going to be the guy in the backfield when he's healthy here? I mean, he's supposed to be, he can be nicked up. He, he was still, he was still playing though. And we, we talked about how good their schedule is down the stretch, uh, minus week 16 and how Jonathan Taylor might be a guy you go out and get. Um, if he's going to be hurt, then I, I guess Wilkins is, is playable, but I mean, their backfield has been a complete mystery. Um, basically from the get-go um, once Marlon Mack got hurt. So, um, yeah, I mean, 20 carries is a lot. <laughs> how's, how's that for analysis? There you um, go. I, uh, I, I mean, a couple bucks? I mean, really? I, he's not long-term. He's not long-term vet. Like, I don't It's just, I don't know. I just don't know what Nick Dump is. I don't think he's going to, I don't think he's going to do anything. And that, Taylor I, was playing. Yeah, well, he was, but in a much more reduced role. Um, and I don't know what. Yeah, but nicked. then why even play him? I yeah, I get it. I completely get it. I don't to see if he could play through it, but then his play sucked, so they eventually turned away. I mean, I I don't know. I have no idea. But yeah, I mean that playoff schedule at Las Vegas, at home against Houston, and then at Pittsburgh. Um. The Pittsburgh one is not great, but the first two, I think, are great. Um, And the schedule even before that isn't terrible. Yeah, at at this point, honestly, see if you can poach Jonathan Taylor from somebody's roster. um, They have to be tilting. They're they're sick of just looking at him. Yeah, right? I mean, try try to catch him on a tilt week where he kind of sucks. This week, you're not going to be able to play him against Baltimore, probably. But then at Tennessee, Green Bay, Tennessee again, Houston, Las Vegas... Those five games in a row should be prime um, where, it, you know, if Jonathan Taylor is healthy for those five games, it would not be surprising to see him be like a top five back for those five games. If he's at full strength and they're giving him the ball, whether that happens or not, I don't know, but I would be trying to target Jonathan Taylor um, just to try to get those five games, especially coming off of a bad week against Detroit. Somebody might see that he is Baltimore coming up and be like, all right, you know what? I'm I'm done. So see if you can poach him. All right. I have a fun one for you. J.K. Dobbins okay. or Jonathan Taylor rest of season. I would take Jonathan Taylor. Yeah. Any thought there at all, like remotely or is it like no immediately? No. No, I don't think so. I, I'm, I'm assuming that Taylor will be back to full health. Uh, in two weeks um, for, for that five game stretch um, and Dobbins has too much competition including his quarterback there you go alright well that does it for running backs um, 
Well, I guess you did say that you'd spend yeah, the, some fab on him. How much? Just a couple bucks? 5%? 10% on Wilkins? Yeah, no, just no, just one or two. Okay, I, I would... The thing is, like, I don't... It, the the part that bothers me, well, the part that I hate about fantasy football in, in general is when a player's hurt, but you don't know he's hurt, and then he tries to play, and you... Like you never get any sort of clarity on what his injury situation is. So you're just stuck starting him. And then things like this happens where he plays hurt and gets just taken out and minimized completely. And you end up with like two points in your, in your lineup. Who else you got? What I miss? Yeah. No, the, yeah, the, the only other running back that, I mean, here we are again. Frank Gore is only rostered in 16.1% of leagues. And if you are super desperate, he's going to at least get you some sort of points. Um, so be- between bye weeks and injuries, and depending on how deep of leagues that you're playing in, if you're in a 14 man or 16 team league and you're looking like Frank Gore. We'll get you a couple points. Um, he has no touchdowns on the year. Theoretically, one's potentially coming. Um, not a sexy name, but he's still there and he's still getting carries. Um, it's certainly a name. I don't know if it's one I would ever recommend to someone. Yes, I mean he had. No, I I agree with you, but he's he's had. I mean he's only had one single digit carry week since week two. So like yeah. the opportunities are there. Yes. I mean, he had, he had 10 carries for a whopping 30 yards. And I really think that that's his line every week. So I, I don't, I don't, I guess I don't, if you're in like a, a 16 or I wouldn't even play him in a 16 team league. Honestly, I don't even think I'd roster him. Like, yeah, you would. I wouldn't. Cause yeah. he, You'd he's not going to gonna, he's not ever going to score more than five points. And I just don't there's no upside. I'd rather hold a handcuff than if that. you are. If you're on a bye week and you need to pl- somebody to play, he's available. That's all I'm saying. And he'll get you two points and you'll hate yourself. You wish that you would have just held on to an extra defense instead for next week. <laughs> Lord, you know what? He's going to score a touchdown this week. You're just pissing me off. Frank Gore <laughs> touchdown calling it now. <laughs> <laughs> Screw you, calling it. <laughs> Don't you dare disrespect Frank Gore. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh my God. He plays. Yeah. They play the Patriots on Monday yeah. Night Football. Yeah. Yeah. That is I guess, terrible. Guess you just, uh, Z- Zach Moss just got two touchdowns. Frank they, Gore's better than Zach Moss. They cannot leave Come that on. game there. That is an awful game. I just oh the, they have to. It's Monday night. The pandering, they, you can't move it. The pandering to large markets by putting the Jets on a Monday night game is just unreal. Like the Jets fans don't even like watching the Jets. Exactly, and the Patriots fans are probably mildly disgusted right now too. All right, let's talk receivers. Um, first up, Corey Davis. Corey Davis has played in five games so far this yeah. season. And through five games, the, in every f- game that he's played, he has at least 10 fantasy points. That's pretty neat. Yeah. Um, he had eight catches, yeah. eight catches for 128 yards and a score against the Bengals in week eight. He's rostered in 36% of leagues. That is atrociously low. How much fab are you spending on Corey Davis? I don't know um, if he was if he was out or not out the two weeks that he missed. Um, so they had a bye week four because of COVID stuff and then missed the game against Buffalo and Houston week five and week six. Um, I mean, he's been really great, super consistent from an average game perspective. Uh, right now, he's averaging 13.9 points a week in half PPR leagues. That's uh, that's solid like that. That will play. Um the only issue is he's facing Chicago this week. <laughs> so yep. that will probably that will probably end. Um, he has 10 targets each of the last two weeks. So, I mean, the, the quantity is there um, for, from an opportunity standpoint. Um, if we take a look at his playoff schedule at Jacksonville, home against Detroit at Green Bay. Um, so two nice weather games there. You never know what Green Bay is going to what's going to happen week 16 and in, in the frozen tundra. 
Um, so I, um, I mean, he's definitely playable. The, the issue is the next two weeks, home against Chicago, home against Indianapolis. Um, those are two really tough defenses. So that would temper my expectations a little bit. Um, if he's available in your league, I would try to steal him for 10% and not go any more than that. Um, and hope, hopefully you can get him, um, you know, maybe even try five. I, if he's available, I don't think you have people in your league that are paying attention. Um, so see if you can get him for a little bit less. Okay. I, I guess I get that now because he's already been added in more than a third of leagues. Um, I, yeah, I would go 10 to 15%. I just think that AJ Brown is still the number one there. And yeah, I, I don't, yeah. I'd be shocked if he hit 10 points against the Bears this week. So I like it. I agree with it. Yeah, I mean, right. I mean, he he's wide receiver two on that team. Um, and then when Johnny Smith is available, he's probably more of a red zone target than Corey Davis is. And they still have Derrick Henry there. And, you know, we talked preseason and have preached it. It's you have to try to predict touchdowns and there's not a whole lot of extra touchdowns to go around there. Um, so that's why I would temper my expectations, especially with the next two weeks coming up. 10 targets in back to back weeks is just absolutely astronomical though for him. You know, I just can't believe. Yeah. Can't believe that those target numbers. Um, all right. Our next receiver is Jalen Rager for the Philadelphia Eagles. Look, I know he only had six targets, which isn't astronomical by any means. Um, however, it was just one short of Fulgham. For the team lead, who finished with seven, and it is his first game back since uh, recovering or undergoing surgery on his thumb. Um, He only finished with three catches for only 16 yards and a score, but we tweeted this out earlier. It does not do it justice. Um... If you watched the entire game till the very end, you did see that he actually just missed on a second touchdown that would have been from 30 yards out uh had the ball knocked out of his hands he had it caught in the end zone uh and then the defender knocked the ball out so i mean he finished with 11 Mm. uh he finished with 11 points uh could have finished with well over 20 and been one of the hotter ads of the week if he was able to come down with that ball but he did not um look in the post game interviews when said you know I'm going to, I love throwing those balls. If my guys are one-on-one and I'm going to keep throwing them to him. And if he's going to keep throwing them up to Rager, I think Rager is going to come down with, you know, I think he's going to come down with a lot of them, quite honestly. Um, They're going to be down. They're going to have to throw. He's only rostered in 14% of leagues. Fab. I wouldn't spend a whole lot of fab on him because I think you could get you. I think you could get him for very cheap. Um, I think you could probably get him for like 5% or less, honestly. Or, I mean, maybe 10 at most, but I wouldn't recommend spending that much. No, yeah. So. Yeah, I, I think he's a 5% or under. And the reason why I say that is because he's on a bye week. Um, and people, a lot of people tend to discount the bye weeks a lot um, where they're willing to just let people sit out there. So, um, again, this is more of a roster construction thing is if you can, if you can hold on to him, I think you can get him for, for under a 5% bid potentially because people are going to look, seize on a buy and stay away from him. Um, especially when roster spots are, are super precious with all the injuries that have been going on. Uh, rigor obviously has the, the upside. Um, so I think you want to roster him. Um, but you have to be aware that there's a bye week. Um, so yeah, 5%. Seems seems reasonable, but at the same time, he's not playing next week. <laughs> no, but that Philadelphia Eagles schedule after the bye is just insane. At the Giants, at the Browns, at home against Seattle, at Green Bay, at home against New Orleans, at the Cardinals, and at Dallas in the championship ga- game and championship week. Like yeah, there's not an yep. easier schedule in all of football, I think, from weeks 10 to 16 than the Philadelphia Eagles have. So it's yeah, somebody in that team from, is going to be a viable. Fantasy, yeah, from a fantasy standpoint. So, yeah, I mean, the, the teams they're playing are good, but but from a from like a potential game script, 
Uh, I mean, Carson Wentz and Dallas Goddard, who is back, and Rager and potentially Alshon. And um, I mean, Fulgham has been like a top five wide receiver the last four, like, month. Um, so yeah, I, you have to like the prospects of, of Rager kind of busting out here at the end. Yep. Absolutely. Our next receiver is Curtis Samuel. And, uh, and, Go ahead. And on a podcast, like three weeks ago, I mentioned his name and you wouldn't stash him and you're very happy. I am. I'm extremely happy. And thank you. You're very smart. <clears throat> I don't even listen to myself. That's my problem. <laughs> Oh, man. Our next Idiots. receiver is Curtis Samuel of the Panthers. He had four catches for 31 yards and a touchdown. Added three yeah. rushing attempts for 23 yards and a second score. Rostered in 37% yep. of leagues. It's that dual usage. Um, I think people might go out there and spend some serious kind of fab on him just because of the score and chase those points. But like don't do it. He's the third receiver on that team. I you got McCaffrey coming back. Like I'm spending less than $5 on him if I bid on him at all. Yep, that's exactly correct. I don't know if you even want to roster him because you don't know when you're going to be able to play him. Yes. Um, I mean, Carolina's throwing the ball 57% of the time, which is 17th most in football from a percentage standpoint. And Christian McCaffrey's coming back. Like, Christian McCaffrey and Mike Davis are both still going to be getting receptions out of the backfield. Um, you will always want to pay for future production, not what he's already done. Um, he's, he's the fourth option there. I mean, Robbie Anderson's 1A, DJ Moore's 1B, and Christian McCaffrey's 2 or 3 or 1C. Um, so I, I don't know if you're going to be able to start Curtis Samuel um, with confidence ever. Uh, he'll, he'll probably have another week or two the next six or seven weeks that, yeah, obviously he's going to be fantasy viable, but good luck trying to figure out when that is. 100% agree. Our next receiver is Mike Williams of the Chargers. He has 20 plus fantasy points in two of the last three games with a one catch performance in the game in between. <laughs> <laughs> Rostered in just over 43% of leagues. Are you spending any fab on Mike Williams? Do you believe that Justin Herbert can support two fantasy receivers? Uh, is he the is he the new Will Fuller who's just going to explode a week and then do nothing the next week and then just go off the next week? Um, yeah, if, you if you can time it up right, God bless you. But uh, yeah, I, he he's a he's a zero or one dollar bid. Um, rostering forty two point seven percent of leagues. Um, and if you can pick the week that he goes off, that's great. And if he sucks, then I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, he only had one catch for four <laughs> yards against Jacksonville two weeks ago. Like, and you would have started him there. Ja like, and you would have started him. And so, like, everybody dropped him this last week, and then he drops twenty, and then people will roster him and play him, and then drop him, and then he'll go off again, and people will roster him and play him, and then drop him again, and wash, rinse, repeat. Um, yeah, I'm. Uh, I mean, hey, if you need somebody. He is a good guy to have as a bye week replacement if you need like a flex player because he has a high upside. And if he doesn't do anything, you're not like super disappointed because you're just picking him up as a bye week replacement. There you go. All right. Our next receiver is Braxton Berrios of the Jets. He had eight catches in week eight. Oh, yuck. No Crowder, no Perriman looking like it in uh, week nine. He's rostered in 1% of leagues. They can get him for free. He had eight catches and I don't think Crowder or Perriman play. Like everybody was, you know, talking about Denzel Mims, but Denzel Mims didn't really do much. So I think that if you're desperate for a receiver or if you're in a PPR league and you want five catches guaranteed, Hey, go pick up some Braxton Berrios, yep. you know? Yeah, I I actually don't totally disagree with you. Um, you know, he had 11 targets this week, seven targets the week before. Those are both weeks that Jamison Crowder wasn't playing. And if you go back to weeks two and three when Jamison Crowder wasn't playing, he had eight targets uh, against San Francisco, six catches, 59 yards, and a touchdown. 
And the week after against Indy, obviously a good defense. He had four catches, 64 and a touchdown. Uh, he seems to be the preferred option when Jamison Money Crowder is not playing. Um, so if you're looking for somebody to pick up and play, um, he seems to be somebody that would have a floor of, you know, four, four to, yeah, I would say four catches, like 40 yards. Um, so he can, you know, he'll help. In um, PPR, he's I viable. When, 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 yeah, when, when Crowder comes back, obviously all of those go to Crowder, but he seems to be like Crowder light uh, when, when Jamison's hurt. There you go. Which which seems like it's like every, like he plays a game and then he's out for two weeks and then he plays two more games. And he's out for three weeks and it's been great. My last receiver ad is Jacoby Myers of the Patriots. Uh, he had 10 targets. Um, more than 10 fantasy points. There's no Edelman. There's no Nikhil Harry. He's rostered in one half of 1% of leagues. I don't really think I mean, you might need to spend a dollar on him, I guess, if people are going to go out there and look at 10 targets and chase it. Um, But I think you could probably get him for free in most leagues. Like, there are not going to be a lot of waiver moves between now and the playoffs unless there's a major catastrophic injury. At least in a lot of leagues, there won't. Um, Because just because a lot of people Mm -hmm. have made waiver moves already. And unless there's a major injury, there were not. I don't think most people are looking to make a ton of moves, um, especially for guys that could be one or two week rentals. So. Yep. I, uh, I feel you on that. Um, I will say I, I got a couple more wideouts to, to mention uh, Marvin Jones, Jr.'s uh, roster in only 54.2% of leagues. Um, Galladay is going to be out. Um, we don't know how long he's week to week at this point. Um, so Marvin Jones Jr., if he's available, um, should obviously be picked up and played. Um, he's got Minnesota this week, uh, which is a fantastic matchup. Um, that defense has allowed the third most pass attempts, or sorry, third most yards per pass attempt, and they've given up 17 passing touchdowns through seven games. Um, so, I mean, Marvin Jones, if he's available, I think he's at worst a wide receiver two until Galladay comes back. Um, so I, I would be willing to spend like 10 to 15% on him. Um, even though he technically does not meet our 50% threshold that we talk about. Um, he's close enough where just be aware if he's available to go pick him up. Um, Russell Gage, um, is, is another guy who, I mean, here we are again with freaking Russell Gage. Are you going to be able to, is he going to do anything? We don't know. Um, Calvin Ridley's injury status, you know, he went out last week. Um, so, I mean, just be aware of Russell Gage. Uh, he's only rostered in 16.8% of leagues. Um, good luck with that. And then I got two more. Darnell Mooney. Um, he's kind of morphed into the Bears deep threat against a good matchup against Tennessee this week. Um, he's had at least five targets um, in each of the last six games. Um, so I don't really like the bears offense outside of Montgomery or Allen Robinson. Um, but th- the Tennessee defense has given up 40 or more points to wide receivers every single week, except week one. So somebody's going to score for the bears. And so if you're, you know, if you're in a rough spot, Darnell Mooney, um, could be a, a play this week where he might get a touchdown or, you know, Foles takes a deep shot to him at least once or twice a game. So don't be surprised if Darnell Mooney catches one and converts one for a touchdown for a longer touchdown this week um, for the Bears. And then I mentioned him before, going to continue to mention him. Alan Lazard should be back this week or next week. Um, he's only rostered in 24.5% of leagues. He's been out the last five weeks uh, when he had that core muscle injury. It was projected at four to six weeks. Um, so again, he's coming back soon. He's available. You should roster him just based on what he did, um, against new Orleans, uh, earlier this season. And I mean, Aaron, Aaron Rodgers can't just throw touchdowns exclusively to Devonte Adams. Right. So at some point, Alan Lazard will, will be back and, and will be a threat. So I, I don't know if you necessarily need to spend any money on any of those guys besides Marvin Jones, Jr. Um, but they should just be on your radar to pick up. I like it. I like all of those. Yeah. The Marvin Jones one, I should not have missed. 
Um, yeah, great. No, it's 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 over fifty percent though. Oh, so see, there it, you it go. Doesn't technically, yeah, it doesn't technically count. But yeah, I, I think I think he's a fifteen, uh, a ten to fifteen percent fab guy, uh, just based on matchups and how much. I mean, they don't really have a whole lot, heck of a lot else to throw the ball to. So um, we saw what Marvin Jones did once um Galladay went out in uh this this past week so I would expect the production to continue there all right and then we got three tight or I have a few tight ends to to get through before we wrap up um the Let's first first up we have Dallas Goddard of the Eagles he had one target one catch for 15 yards in his return against Dallas yesterday super disappointing yes extremely disappointing I mean maybe he's just not all the way back health wise yet uh, rostered in about 48% of leagues. So he is available in more than half of leagues. I think he'll routinely be ranked inside of the top 12 from now through the end of the season. He could be a league winner if he yep. shows up. Um, I would spend fab on Dallas Goddard, uh, especially if I'm in need of a tight end. I would probably spend like 20%, 25% trying to land Goddard. So... Yeah, I agree. I mean, he played in 53 of the 63 snaps for the Eagles. Um, so he was on the field a lot. Just wasn't I mean, he only had the one target, which is somewhat surprising because the Eagles traditionally have like thrown to their tight ends, although that really wasn't the case with Ertz. Um, Goddard obviously started the season out really hot, um, rostered 48 percent of leagues, which I'm surprised that that's not higher. Um, we, we already talked about their schedule with other players again at at the Giants, at Cleveland, Seattle, at Green Bay, New Orleans, at Arizona, at Dallas. There is not a scary matchup in there um, for an Eagles offensive player. So, um, yeah, if he's available, um, I honestly, I, I think 30% is fair. Again, they're on a bye week this week, so just be aware of that. Um, but yeah, obviously Dallas Goddard should be rostered in every league going forward, in my opinion. Agreed. Uh, next up, we have Robert Tanyan. Good old, or excuse me, Tanyan. Everybody's been saying it wrong. Uh, good old Bobby Tanyan of the Packers had seven targets, five catches for 79 yards against the Vikings in week eight. He's rostered in about 47.5% of leagues. Uh, how much fab would you spend on Tanyan? That's just, a, I mean, he's tight on eight. I know he had the, the big week, but how is he only rostered in 46% of leagues? Like, I have what no are idea. Doing? Uh, he, he, uh, he did have only four points each of the last two weeks before this week, having a little bit of a reemergence uh, against Minnesota's rough defense. Um, I mean, he should clearly be rostered. Um, I would, I don't think I'd spend more than 5% on him because if people aren't paying attention yet, then like, you know, right. go get him, especially if you have Kittle injured. Yeah. And then speaking of George Kittle, um, as a Kittle manager myself, um, somebody I'm evaluating on adding this week is Jordan Reed of the 49ers, the Kittle backup who's looking at being activated. Um, um, so mm -hmm. I, I guess I would say that if he can replicate 60% of what Kittle does, I mean, <sighs> we saw him do it in week two. I think <laughs> we saw him do it in week two while Kittle was out. Um, he's designated. Re he was designated to return on the 28th. He's rostered in a percent and a half of leagues. I don't know if you even need to spend any fab on him. Um, like it's him. No. It's going <laughs> it's going to be him or Ross Dwelly. Like, my guide, Ross Dwelly. Ross Dwelly. Ross Dwelly. He had four for 49 on four targets in week three. And he had, of course, the touchdown yep. against Seattle uh, this past week after yep. Kittle was injured. So it's going to be Dwelly or Jordan Reed. If you are the Kittle manager and you're in a league like mine that's competitive where T Tunyon and Goddard are already added. I mean, it's. I'm probably adding Ross Dwelly, Jordan Reed, or like trying to add Logan Thomas if I can. Um, yeah, there you go. If he's well, even, I, I say Logan Thomas. Yeah, Logan Thomas is definitely more of a 
Like interesting option, roster in eight point seven, eight point one percent of leagues. He's had a touchdown each of the t- last two games that he's played in um, with Kyle Allen for the football team from Washington, um, and he's had four or more targets in every single game this year. Um, so from like a, you know, obviously you hope he scores, um, but yeah, I. Uh, I, I think Logan Thomas is a better option over Jordan Reed for sure because Jordan Reed, I mean, he gets hit once. The guy's made of glass. Uh, I don't know. And and he's so the he's made of glass and he's playing for the 49ers. That's a terrible combination. I mean, maybe, um, but so he also had seven it, catches for 50 yards and two scores in week two. Like. Yeah, I know. And Green Bay this week. It's fine. Like, it's not it's not okay. bad. It's a, so. it's a gutsy play. I'd rather start Logan Thomas. Um, also, if you have a ton of flexibility with your roster, um, if Austin Hooper's available, he's another guy to potentially look out for. Uh, he's rostered in 46.3% of leagues. Um, he's been out because if you had an appendectomy, which really sucks if you've ever had to get your appendix taken out, especially if you're on your honeymoon with your wife and you're on a cruise and you can't poop for three days, and then you come back to the United States and you're like, oh, you have to get your appendix out. Sorry, personal story. Um, so uh, Austin Hooper has been out the last three weeks. Um, they're on a bye this week uh, with. Um, <laughs> um, so <laughs> be, before Austin Hooper uh, had to get his appendix taken out. Uh, his targets, the, th- the previous three games were seven targets, 10 targets, six targets. Uh, he had five catches in each of those games. Um, theoretically, he'll be back after the bye. Um, so Austin Hooper is somebody that potentially could save you if you're in a rough tight end spot as well. I like it. That's, those are some good, those are some good ads. I don't feel, I don't feel so desperate as I did like four hours ago when I learned that my good old George Kittle was gone for the rest of the season. So yeah. All right, let's move on to don't worry. Every little thing is going to be all right. Lord. All right, let's move on to newsy stuff. I love it. I love that drop. (laughs) You love your stuff of news. Oh man. Well, this is actually some, I think important news. Um, The competition committee is going to present a resolution to NFL owners for an expanded postseason if regular season games are lost to COVID-19. It would be a 16-team playoff, eight from each conference with four division champs and four wild cards as well. Uh, There would be no buys. It would just be one versus eight and on down the line. Um the league is concerned about losing games and there's obviously no more bye week flexibility. So yeah, that's a thing. That's fun. What do you think, Alex? I don't know, man. It's, um, we talked briefly about this before we started, um, be, being a commish where, you know, before the season started and, and we talked about it ex- extensively is, you know, make sure to set up ground rules for what, you know, what the season, what a complete season looks like. Um, and we said that all 16 games had to be played. Now, if they cancel or postpone games as COVID is starting to spike as in cases throughout the United States right now, and you're starting to see more and more NFL players come down with it. I mean, AJ Dillon um tested positive for it you know, like the fact that the nfl is testing them sunday morning they're, they're not getting the results back until sunday night or monday that doesn't do shit come on like if you're going to test them test them on saturday so you get the results back before the game on sunday what are you well, doing it's, it's incubation totally though they topic. could test negative saturday and then test positive sunday with the way it incubates i mean there's just not a there's no solution there's there's not a reliable enough no. solution just no, I I get that, but so when it when it comes to you know them potentially having the out where they're gonna say all right, well we're just gonna cancel a game. Um, so if if they cancel a game week fourteen, fifteen, or sixteen and don't make it up, and you're in your fantasy playoffs and like just as an example, 
let's say the Kansas City Chiefs cancel their week 15 game and somebody has Mahomes and Kelsey on their team. Like, like what are you supposed to do? Like, that's that's awful, you know? And like, it's not fair to the person that has Mahomes and Kelsey. It's obviously not fair to, well, it's obviously fair to the other person who's like, oh, suck it. Um, Pretty but much. I, like, that's not what that's not what you want your fantasy season to to end with. Um, so if if you say, "Hey, all sixteen have to be played," and you're the commission, something like that happens, like, do you return? You're not going to return the money to everybody. Do you just split it four ways between who's left and call it good? Do you like? I, I think you need to be having the conversations or at least put thought into if what happens if they if so one if this passes two if they add a week 18 to make up some of those games um, I, I just just be thinking about it I, I don't want to go doomsday on everybody because we've already kind of done that with COVID and it hasn't really impacted all that much from a fantasy perspective um, but just it's something to be aware of and I mean it did at the beginning of the season at least be talking yeah yeah but they were able to move buys around nobody's missed a game it's all gotten played yeah it's screwed up a little bit but you know it wasn't like catastrophic um to where they could just cancel a game and not make it up and say well you know we really want the Kansas City Chiefs to be in the playoffs in a couple weeks and be healthy so um we're going to cancel the game and um too damn bad yes um, and yeah. and that would that would just be super unfortunate yeah it's it was amazing at how well the titans were able to recover after you know 20 plus people in their organization came down with it um yeah it's going to be interesting to see what they do with the packers like you brought up briefly um aj Dillon, obviously as you mentioned did test positive you have jones with a calf injury uh, williams it was ruled to be a, a close contact and is um you know, isolating as well. So then that leaves you with Tyler Irvin and Dexter Williams at running back. A um, couple practice squad guys. You got to think that they're probably going to move the game, hopefully, um, to later in the weekend. And maybe there just won't be Thursday night football. Um, because, man, that's that's rough for the Packers. But if they I mean, if they don't and they play it. I, I don't know. It's going to be interesting. Then Aaron Rodgers is going to have to throw for 400 yards and four touchdowns. Yeah. All, well, all to Devontae Adams. Or you could pick up Tyler Irvin or Dexter Williams and try and plug and play him. But that'd be interesting. Yeah. Um, yep. If Jones doesn't play. T- tough, tough matchup. Yeah. Tough matchup to, to try to plug a running <laughs> yeah. back in against the 49ers. And then uh, the last bit is it is. Antonio Brown's first week of NFL football um, since being canned by the Patriots last year. Uh, the Buccaneers play the Saints at home in, on Sunday night. You'll have Evans and Antonio on the field together. Godwin is hoping to be back in week nine, recovering from a fractured index finger surgery. Um, Man, where do you think AB finishes rest of season? Is he a wide receiver two or better? Um, I'd like to go on record and say that I, I don't think Antonio Brown is a very good human being. Um, oh, so yeah, I, that's I would not just like debatable. To start off the conversation with that. Uh, yeah, he's kind of a piece of crap. Um, yep. When it comes to fantasy football, um, I mean, he could be really good. Um, I. I I compare him a lot to a role as Chapman uh, as I celebrate the Cubs winning the World Series four years ago today, where uh, if you have him, you're rooting for him um, because he's on your team. And if you uh, don't have him on your team, you should root against him. Um, so from a from a fantasy perspective, though, um, I think he could be a, a wide receiver one um, if he's back to what he has been historically. Um, 
because Tom Brady's thrown to a bunch of nobodies with Scotty Miller, and there was somebody else that I'd never heard of that was that had four catches tonight uh, in the first half. And Tyler Johnson, um, Mike Evans has a look. No, it was somebody. It was somebody else. Uh, I, I honestly don't know who it was. Um, and Mike Evans has been hurt, and Godwin's got a bad hand, and Tom Brady loves him some some Antonio Brown. So. Um, yeah, I would not be surprised to see him be a wide receiver two at worst um, with wide receiver one upside. Yeah, it's going to be crazy. I just, I don't think Tom or that offense will be able to support, like, there's no way they support three wide receiver ones, let alone two. You, and Gronk. Yeah, and Gronk. There's no way. So, I, I, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. It's not going to be great. I feel like Mike Evans is the odd man out because he has been every time Godwin's played. I feel like Godwin's role is pretty set. Gronk is a nice red zone threat. And then it's just about how many plays Evans and AB can make. Um, It only takes one play to be fantasy relevant. So... What an incredible offense that's going to be. But yeah, I absolutely second everything you said about Antonio Brown being scumbag of the year. Um, I I can't believe that he was even signed, really. But yeah, they're and you know, their schedule the rest of the way is, is pretty damn good. Um, home against New Orleans next week at Carolina, the Rams, Kansas City. They have their bye week week 13. And my God, man, their their playoff matchup, Minnesota at Atlanta at Detroit is just so good. It's obscene um, that don't don't be surprised to see, you know, Tom Brady, Antonio Brown potentially win you a, a fantasy title, um, depending on health and whatever craziness Brown causes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And then, I mean, you have the emergence of Leonard Fournette, who actually handled 15 carries for 52 yards tonight. Led that backfield in touches. Um, sucks for Ronald Jones. Yeah, after, after, after another Ronald Jones fumble loss on a kind of a weird catch play where he got stripped as he was getting up. Um, but yeah, they, uh, they might be leaning more on Fournette going forward. Wouldn't be surprising. Out touched him fifteen to seven from running back carries on the night. Just man, well, wow. um, yeah. All right, well, we ran long today, but there were some newsy things that we had to cover. So with that, let's go ahead and transfer yeah, to our social media page. Thank you all for watching. We are the Fantasy Football Sackos. We are on all listening platforms we are on youtube if you liked what you saw or listened to please like please subscribe please follow on your platform if you're on youtube ring that bell while you can and have a good night people forget that the chicago cubs won the world series four years ago just want to just want to make sure people don't forget it's a football podcast i don't care the cubs won the freaking world series and i didn't think it was ever going to happen damn it Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Football Sackos podcast. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at the FF Sackos.